With the wonderfully restored Let It Be recently released, just what exactly is the next Beatles project we can expect to see from Peter Jackson? Peter has made it publicly known that he would gladly work on any project proposed by Apple. During the making of Get Back, he had unfettered access to the Apple archives and has a perfect overview of exactly what there is currently held under lock and key. At the heart of Peter's movies lies a great storyteller, well-versed in truly epic productions. I suspect his ambition is no less than a movie exploring the entirety of the Beatles story, and indeed, what could be better than to tell the greatest story ever told? There was a hint of this at the beginning of Get Back. Before we even got to Twickenham Studios, Peter provided us with an expertly edited 10-minute reel of the events leading up to January 1969, dating all the way back to the group's origins in 1956. As audition reels go, it was perfectly judged and executed. As enjoyable as the anthology documentary was, I felt it didn't do adequate justice to the Beatles' legacy. The footage used was restored with the limited technology of the 1990s and only treated in standard definition, a format now destined for the trash can of history. Apple may just give us a version of anthology restored up to HD or 4K and expanded one day, but I believe Peter's vision, skill set and ambition go way beyond this. Part of the great joy of Get Back was seeing how the Beatles created and interacted together. The group was filmed rehearsing only once before. In EMI Studios in Abbey Road on the 30th of July 1968, Hey Jude is taken through its paces. The crew were there for some time, but only a few minutes were broadcast on NBC's Experiment in Television. The unseen footage is rife for the Peter Jackson treatment, and also historically significant. George Harrison can be seen apart from the other Beatles at the mixing desk with George Martin. This is presumably just after George's argument with Paul over playing a guitar phrase as a response to each line of Paul's vocal. Like me, Peter is a great admirer of the Star Club tapes from 1962, and keen to use demix technology to finally secure an official Apple release. The fact that Peter now owns the tapes brings us an important step nearer since AI works best from a first-generation source. Then there are all the other live recordings from the Myriad TV and concert appearances. In 2022, Peter spoke of working on another project with the Beatles, which was not really a documentary. He commented, it's so technically complicated. I'm trying to work how exactly I'll do it. It's a live action movie, but it needs technology that doesn't quite exist at the moment. So we're in the middle of developing the technology to allow it to happen. Could this be an AI generated recreation of the Beatles Star Club performance? Although, although no film footage appears to exist, there are several steals to work from. Peter has used technology before to reunite Paul and John. He pitched the concept to Paul, who was so delighted he incorporated I've Got a Feeling into his 2022 Glastonbury set. One year later, we also had the joy of seeing all four Beatles reunited in Now and Then, Peter's debut pop video. Apple seems intent on further box sets. Following the use of Mal Demix technology on Revolver, expect this to be used more and more, especially as Apple reaches further back into the earlier recordings, where only twin or mono track masters were made. How about all the BBC recordings, which could be considerably improved with today's technology? There is still the small matter of a further 50 hours of restored get back footage plus the complete rooftop concert, unspoilt by the street vox pops, all now gathering dust on Apple's well-stocked shelves. Whatever is coming next, I just can't wait.